Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my friends all across the happy globe today, and welcome back to another episode of Riverbend Discovery Center. So today, we're actually doing a double feature, if you will. We're doing two animals in one episode. Can you believe that? We're doing two relatively small habitats. Um, I just really wanted to finish up this building over here. I'm kind of calling it the unofficial Africa building. You know how oftentimes you go to like some small zoos and they don't really have distinctive sections? But it feels like the animals are all supposed to be in the same area. That's kind of what I'm doing over here with Riverbend. I'm throwing a bunch of African animals over here in this general area. And I think it's working pretty well. So as you guys can probably already tell from the thumbnail, we're working with the Fennec Fox and the Meerkat. Both some of my favorite standouts from the Africa pack. And I was so excited to get building with these. They're both relatively small animals. I feel like work extremely well in this case. And even though Fennec Foxes are a little bit nocturnal they don't really like the sun i still wanted to give them a nice big old habitat over here and you can see we threw a bunch of meerkats in here uh unfortunately when i was building this i did completely forget that my good friend bz builds if you guys have not heard of him he's a wonderful creator but he actually built us an interior for our chimpanzee habitat and we'll actually see that later down the line uh, I wanted to show it off in this episode, but it completely flew my mind. And you can probably guess there's going to be a certain cut in the video where I build on the wrong map. So we kind of transport what I'm building right here over to a new map. But good thing is everything works out. Everything is fine. And it all works out in the end because we get a beautiful, beautiful habitat in the end. So, one of the things I really want to do was have this be built kind of on a hill. Nothing really too crazy. I want to make sure that we also got the limestone pieces all set over there. Because when you do have entrances like that, you do need to have a little bit more support under them. So that's exactly what we do over there with the meerkat entrance and the staff entrance. So the staff are able to traverse into here. Well, probably not the entire habitat. But they are able to at least traverse into the habitat and kind of clean up all the poop and stuff so that's all good right there and we kind of just dress it up a little bit more we kind of do a little bit of rock work over here nothing really too crazy but enough stuff to kind of make it feel justified that you know they kind of did a little bit of theming over here this is exactly where you would see the theming really come into play in Riverbend Discovery Center uh, as you guys if you've been watching the series for quite some time now uh, I really didn't want to go in with too much theming I really just wanted to have this be a basic kind of like you know kind of mid-budget zoo that doesn't really care about theming uh oftentimes when i do make these parks i love to role play in it and i love to make these little stories and i felt like having this kind of park with like little to no um care for theming would be a really fun thing to have and over here i guess you could say they're getting kind of experimental with their theming they're kind of doing some semi-advanced rock work they're kind of doing some fun stuff with the meerkats and the fennec foxes uh, but I don't know, I just really love how it all turned out. So we're also doing some light foliage on the outside. I really wanted to have this feel a lot more lush, if that makes sense. Have it be nice and contrasted against the desert habitats that we do have set up. In case if you guys forgot, the last-ish episode, uh, probably two episodes ago, we actually made the honey badger habitat, which is on the other side of this building. You can kind of see it peeking out from over there. I also want to do a custom sign over here with the meerkats doing like their little sentry pose, so I kind of have this this little education board made by lion of course oh my god i can't get enough of these buddy i really can't they're some of my favorite pieces and we also just have the meerkats kind of poking up behind them and you can see me start to incorporate a lot more sand into these habitats and that's because i really wanted to make it feel a lot more distinct from the rest of the zoo i really wanted to have it be a, like you know a lot more dusty a lot more sandy and that was where i realized i messed up so essentially what you don't see i kind of transplant that entire meerkat habitat over here so now they're totally fine um there's a like a couple small changes and whatnot but it's totally fine you guys won't even notice it believe it or not and if you do notice it let me know i'll give you like i don't know like a high five or something uh so moving on through here the fennec foxes this was a really interesting habitat to build for because i was just really keen on giving them like a little bit of climbing because while they don't really 
they're not arboreal, okay? They're not arboreal in the slightest. But I still wanted to build them some elevated areas. I thought that would be a really fun thing to do. So we use a lot more of the European pack pieces, like all that climbing and stuff that came in with that pack. I was so excited to start building with that, so we kind of do a little bit of that, but not without doing some foliage work, of course. I really needed to use some drin grass in here because it's a beautiful dry bush and it looks so incredible in here. I'm also starting to become more familiar with that nitria bush or nitrate, I don't even know. Uh, but either way, it's a really beautiful bush. And I also want to throw one of those over there and something else Else I'm doing, as you guys can probably tell, I did this in Los Monsteros. I'm turning the Triordia grass upside down because it looks like weeds and it looks kind of like dead grass. Uh, that's something I really want to have in this habitat as well because it's a nice kind of dry looking shrub and it looks pretty good in the end. So essentially what I'm doing over here as well, I'm just making sure that we can integrate this little climbing bed over here. They can't actually climb it in the game, which is a little bit of a shame, but I thought I would just have it there for realism's sake. Uh, over at Capron Park Zoo, which is the closest zoo to me that has fennec foxes. These guys do like to climb. They actually have a vertical habitat, which is very interesting. So they can kind of go up and down it vertically. It's pretty cool. Uh, I really do like that habitat a lot. And the fennec foxes over there are so tiny and so freaking cute. Easily some of my favorite, like, canines in the world. They're adorable. I just love all animals, guys. You guys can tell that. But I was thinking something was missing over here, so I was like, all right, I want to make a little bit of a bridge for these guys, even though they won't use it. I know, it's crazy. So I kind of use a small bridge over here, and I color it up to match it perfectly. I think that's pretty cute as well, and they can go under it, which is really adorable as well. And we kind of angle it up so it doesn't look too boring, it doesn't look too stagnant, and it gives it a lot more elevation changes. So that's something I can always recommend to you guys. Always work with elevation always work with like changing up heights and stuff i say that when we're on river bend don't don't at me okay <laughs> but always change elevations and stuff because it always pays off in the end uh it gives it a lot more dynamic feel and we also add the periwinkle grass in here it's a nice dry one uh the kind of like lighter one it works exceptionally well in deserts and stuff and gives this beautiful patchy kind of look to it i really like it for that regard and again i was kind of just like you know what am i gonna do for the rest of this is an episode because everything kind of looked good for the habitat standpoint but i really wanted to help flesh out the area around this habitat as well because listen i want to end riverbend soon i say that in the next episode i actually recorded the next episode before this episode so that was a little weird but i really want to finish the series soon because i want to just tie up a nice little bow on this series and say listen i finished another zoo and I got it out for all of you guys out there. And that's pretty much the goal of like going forward. I really want to finish this up so we could focus a lot more on, you know, Hope Island. So we could focus a lot more on Los Monsteros. That's going to be a really fun project to bite my teeth into soon enough. I'm, I can't wait to get back to it. Uh, as I'm recording this, I'm about to take off for, uh, for my little vacation. I'll come back with all these stories of the zoo that I'm going to and all the museums and whatnot. So I'll let you guys know everything that happened happens about that if you could guess where i'm going that'd be pretty fun but moving on through here i really just want to have this be a little bit dry area in between the uh in between the fennec foxes and the river otters i wanted to be kind of sunken in with a few like dead plants and stuff like that maybe it's a little bit of a uh a little bit of an area like a clearing yeah a forest clearing that's exactly what i wanted speaking of forest i can't wait to do like the foliage around this entire zoo that's gonna be wicked fun to get my you know, get get my hands on and stuff like that that'll be wicked fun to do but you could see me trying to struggle <laughs> struggling really to get all this stuff to work out good making sure that we use as much bamboo as possible because i heard s dan saying this and i'm so happy he's starting to learn this little technique but bamboo is one of the cheapest things that you could use, but it's also one of the best things that you could use. It really does help to sell this nice condensed kind of area feel, and it makes you feel like you're being transported into like, you know, a different climate, different world, because it's such a hardy plant. It works wherever you want it to be. Even like in colder regions, I know it works over like in Northern Europe and stuff like that. It works over here in New England. It works even in tropical areas. It's such a hardy plant. Uh, and that's 
again, like I constantly stress that. Use bamboo in your builds. But listen, we are all set for today. That is our entire episode. I do want to stop to thank you guys once again for stopping by for another episode of Riverbend Discovery Center. Happy you guys are still enjoying the series because I still am. Still one of my favorite projects I've done. So clean, so fun to build for. And you know what? You guys are always so fun to build for. So if you guys enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like, drop a comment, even drop a subscribe if you can. Please, it always does help me out. But hey, listen, I'm not begging. It's something you guys can do on your own volition. I'll leave you guys be with all that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care, and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now. Mm -hmm.